So let's have a look at living and non-living things, which seems really basic, but actually how we decide if something is alive, not alive, decide if something is living or a non-living object. Now remember, there's a difference between alive and living. Um, something which we would consider a living thing doesn't have to be alive at that point. Um, anyway, we'll get into that as we go. So our learning goal here is for you to be able to work out that there are guidelines for making those things. So there are criteria before we say something's alive. And that can get a bit iffy when we talk about things like viruses. Um, and also how to apply them. And if you can apply those rules and use our vocabulary effectively, I'd say you've had a bit of success with this lesson. Um, so here's your vocabulary. If I could just get you to pause the video here and write these down in your vocabulary section or at the beginning of your lesson. So we've got something to refer back to as we move throughout the lesson. Um, so living things, right? Like basically, if we're talking about classification or taxonomy, we like to break things into smaller and smaller groups. And if we look at all the objects on Earth and in the universe, we can break them into one uh, into two categories, living or not living. Um, and just remember that something is dead, I have no, I no longer alive, we'd still put that into the living things realm. Because, for example, a um, just because we're classifying it, uh, a, I don't want to say a cat that's been run over, but a cat that was run over is still a cat, so it still fits into the same categories. As, I don't know why I went to that one. It still fits into the category of cat. Um, so, for example, we've got this rock here, right? Like, this rock is not alive. It doesn't meet any of our criteria. Whereas this rock is very much alive. Um, it's a living thing. It, you know, it breathes, it grows, and, and so forth. Um, and we see, even as it is as an advanced age now, still growing. Mighty swole he is indeed. Um, so, what are the characteristics of living things? First, there's movement, right? Then we have respiration. All living things respire. Um, so, use oxygen to process energy, um, producing carbon dioxide. Uh, they all respond to stimuli. That's actually a really interesting one because a lot of people didn't quite, a lot of people particularly if they haven't thought about it, you don't really think of plants and such as responding to stimuli or bacteria, but they do. Um, growth, all things grow and get bigger, reproduces, um, excretes, excretes waste, and is involved with nutrition. Um, now, that's a, a long list of seven things, and we can use the acronym Mrs. Gren as a way of remembering, or Mrs. Nerg is another one. I like Mrs. Gren, but Mrs. Nerg's pretty good too. Um, same thing, just different order, obviously. So movement, right? And here we've got a couple of examples of plants moving. For example, sunflowers. It's one of the reasons of one of my favorite plants. They visibly follow the sun from east to west throughout the day. So when we say movement, it means it moves around in some way, either consciously or unconsciously. Okay, so plants don't get up and walk around, but they still exhibit movement. Bacteria, amoeba, all move towards different nutrients and so forth. Um, phototropism occurs in plants. And that's a really fun one because it's a combination of both movement and response to stimuli. Uh, respiration. So respiration occurs on a cellular level for all living things. This means they take oxygen in, they use it to convert food into energy, and then they breathe out carbon dioxide. Um, so plants and animals use oxygen or O2 to process glucose, which is C6H12O6, on a cellular level, producing energy and carbon dioxide. So that's fun. Um, now, stimuli. All living things respond to external stimuli. That means not from within the organism itself. So here we have, um, I think it's a mimosa plant, um, where if you touch it, the leaves fold up. There are other ones. We'll see another one in a second. Um, I, I'm quite enjoying plants at the moment. That's why there's a lot of plant stuff. Normally, I'd be focused on animals, but here we go. Um, growth, it means it grows and gets bigger, uh, gets larger over time. Uh, and we can see that with all of our mushrooms here and such. And it uses materials from the environment to build mass. That's really important, right? So plants, when they get bigger, they're pulling um, carbon dioxide out of the air, uh, nitrogen and phosphorus and stuff out of the soil, 
water out of the soil up into the roots. Humans, we take our food, um, like we eat our hamburgers, and that helps us get bigger over time. Um, still helping me grow problematically. Um, reproduces is another one. So all organisms reproduce. Um, this can be either sexually or asexually. Sexually means two come together, make new ones. Asexually means one splits into two. Um, excretes waste. So carbon dioxide, poops, urea, and these exit the, the organism. So it, was, it makes waste and then it excretes it out the body or the cells. Um, nutrition is really important. This means that all organisms gain nutrients from the environment. Um, these can obtain, so as an animal, we will obtain various forms of glucose from the environment to be ingested. Um, plants produce their own glucose, but they produce it using the water and carbon dioxide they get from the environment, and then animals come along and eat that, and so forth and so forth. Um, yeah, so those are our our seven uh, seven factors. If you can, if something ticks all those boxes, it does all of those things, we can start to say it's alive, or it's a living thing, not alive. It's a living thing. Um, I hope that made a lot of sense. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you for watching and we'll catch you next time. Bye now.